Retro Ghetto. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Retro Ghetto. So I've been fortunate in the last couple of weeks to have had some fantastic charity shop finds here on the channel. Viewers of the vlogs will know that a couple of weeks back I found five nice games for just one pound. And just last week I found a nice wee bundle in the local charity shop and both of which have culminated in a nice, quite sizable CEX voucher. Now, like a lot of you guys watching, I've got a list of games that I want as long as my arm, if not longer. So I've spent many, many hours going through the CEX app and constantly changing, upgrading, removing and adding to my CEX basket on said app. And I think I finally come away with the perfect combination with which to spend those almost £200 in vouchers on retro video games. Those are the games that you can see right there. I think we've got four games to go through today and I think I've got a nice combination of games that I want for collections, i.e. four sets that I'm going for, games that I've been wanting to play for a very long time and games that I think will go up in value and are significantly more expensive on eBay than they are right now on CEX. So, with all that being said, let's get into these, shall we? So we're gonna start with this one on the top. Now, I think these pretty much go in sort of price order, um, so we'll just sort of go as they are. Now, I think there's two games in this one, at least I'm hoping there is, or we're a game short. So, yeah, let's uh, switch to the trusty secondary camera here. Um, we're going to pull the tab. <laughs> that must be the most anticlimactic tab pull. <laughs> I've got about five millimetres out of that. Right, we're just going to have to brute strength it, right? We're just going to have to rip it open. I'm going to take out just one of these games. Put the box back. And that game is... Woohoo! PlayStation 2's Gradius 5. The 2004 Konami published release was largely developed by Treasure, the team responsible for classics such as Radiant Silvergun and Ikaruga. You control a spacecraft known as Vic Viper as you progress through the territories of the Bacterian, which is an evil empire. I mean, you know the drill with shmups, right? It's, there's always some new different space creed that's invaded your planet and it's your job to single-handedly blast everything in sight and put the will back to rights. This is a 2D vertical scroller and upon its release it was praised by critics for its level design, graphics which as you can see are absolutely stunning and for its ability to revive a classic. However, like many shmups, um, some critics held its downfall as its difficulty. This is a very difficult game but uh, yeah, one that I'm looking forward to, uh, <laughs> I was going to say getting abused by, but one that I'm looking forward to learning, shall we say, and uh, hopefully getting better at as time progresses. Um, really enjoying picking up games for the PlayStation 2 since I purchased my PS2 TV and uh, finally got it into situ here in the 3.0 and yeah, um, sometimes when you get big purchases like that, it uh, kind of gives you that new lease of life for collecting for certain systems which had otherwise laid dormant in terms of like my collections for the past couple of years. So yeah, really, really happy to be hopefully adding this one. So let's take a look at what we've got. Um, yeah, the case looks to be in really nice condition. Fantastic artwork on this, right? Absolutely love that. Stunning. But it's not a cheap game. Um, so a lot of this depends on whether it has a manual or not. So this is a £28 game at CEX, so obviously with postage you're looking at £31. The cheapest one that I could find complete and the PAL version critically, because there's a lot of um, NTSC and Japanese releases. Critically, the cheapest PAL one I could find on eBay was £41. So if this is complete, this is a real nice uh, deal here. and It does feel heavy, so I'm somewhat confident this is going to be a win. But... Yes, happy with that. So we've got the nice manual here, and this is all in really nice condition. Oh, it even comes with a poster, which, <laughs> I mean, it's generous to call something of that size a poster, right? But it's still nice artwork nonetheless, and I appreciate it. Full colour manual, yeah, there's something you don't see enough of these days. I am delighted with that. What a great start. We're definitely one for one on the old uh, CEX lottery. 
Yeah, man. Great start. Okay, so I guess we should find out what the other game in the same parcel is. And uh, it's quite interesting that these came from the same store. They probably got traded in by the same person. And I'm sure there's some of you out there watching that can probably guess what this game is. Uh, let's get straight into it. We have Gradius 3 and 4. So Gradius 3 and 4 was a launch title for the PS2 way back in the year 2000. A compilation game combining ports of the arcade versions of 1989's Gradius 3 and 1999's Gradius 4. And uh, yeah, if nothing else, the intro on this is unreal. This game features arcade perfect gameplay and it also has some added options with the added stage select and uh, optional menu screen that you didn't get in the arcades. And due to the PS2's processor being more powerful than the initial arcade cabinet's processor of the release, you can actually now change the lag, uh, which you weren't able to do on the arcade machine of course. And this actually got a bit of a mixed reception on release, whilst critics said that you know these were classic games and it was great to have them on uh, these home consoles. I think it was widely criticised because there wasn't uh, a lot of new uh, options or anything added to the games. Um, but I don't mind that, right? I'm more than happy. I just want to be able to play these games, these absolute classics. Uh, Gradius 3 is a game which has escaped me because it didn't never got a PAL release on the Super Nintendo. It was um, widely available in other uh, areas in the world, but yeah, for some reason it never got a PAL release on the Super Nintendo, so it's not part of the full set that I'm hunting for. So for me to be able to have 3 and 4 to now bridge that Gradius gap to 5 that we've just seen, uh, yeah, I'm absolutely delighted, man. I mean... Just feels like these are must-owns for a shmup fan, um, especially one that's recently invested in a PS2 TV and he's on a little bit of a PS2 kick, as I say. But let's get into it then. If you look at this camera here, this looks initially like I thought there might be some damage at the bottom, but I don't actually think that's damage to the sleeve. I think that's just where it's been nicked on the actual case itself. Um, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, I can easily swap that out if needs be. Once again, it feels heavy. Yeah, we have got a manual. And uh, I think we're going to another winner here. There's a little bit of pen on the top side of the disc. With it being the top side, I don't think it would matter. Uh, blue disc looks to be in good condition. Also, another little bit of mark pen on the top corner. You can barely see it. That's not an issue to me. And uh, once more, full colour manual. I think we've done well here, you know. Um, and that's what I said. Interesting that they've come from the same store. They've both come in the same box. So... One would assume that somebody traded both of these games in, right? Unless it's just coincidence, but really happy to have both of these games in my collection or all three of these games in my collection, should I say. This is going well, uh, very well thus far. We, I think we're two for two, right? And um, guys, let me know in the comment section what other PS2 shmups uh, are must play. I do have quite a few. You'll be seeing them on screen now, but uh, if there's anything that I'm missing, any glaring emissions from my PS2 shmup collection, uh, make sure you let me know in the comments, but... I mean, how cool do they look? Just the spine arts, right, together. Very, very happy with that. This is going very well. So, without wishing to tempt fate, let's jump into the next one, shall we? Um, so, I think, based on when this arrived, this is <sighs> something different. I've made a purchase here that I don't think I've ever made before. Um, I don't mean in terms of the game. <sighs> Probably best to just get to it, but yeah. Um, very different strategy for me this one. But uh, anyway, let's just get into it and then we'll discuss all that. Not the best of packaging. This is a Sega Mega Drive game. A thin piece of cardboard envelope like this, in my opinion, probably not adequate for a Mega Drive game, right? Not a cheap Mega Drive game either. Anyway, let's get into it. That game is Cheeky Cheeky Boys. Or Mega Twins, as it's known in the US, but I prefer Cheeky Cheeky Boys, right? <laughs> I don't know what it is, I have to say it in like that accent. Cheeky Cheeky. <laughs> yeah, it's just one of the titles that makes me smile. So, anyway, Cheeky Cheeky Boys. Uh, this is a platformer originally developed by Capcom for the arcades in 1990 before its Mega Drive release uh, two years later. Identical to the arcade, uh, minus, unfortunately, the two-player co-op functionality. Um, it's a shame, because it's sort of game that would be great to play two-player. Uh, over the game's nine levels, you utilise magic swords, bombs and more, whilst hunting for hidden treasure and power-ups to retake control of their land after a monster attacks, destroying everything in its path. 
And as you'll be seeing on screen now, an absolutely beautiful game, right? Yeah, just stunning visually. But in terms of the storyline, the people of this land have forgotten how to fight after over a thousand years of peace. So it falls upon the two sons of the king to return the land to its former glory. Apparently they're 15 year olds. I mean, <laughs> they don't look like 15 year olds to me, right? I didn't look like that when I was 15. I mean, I never wore red spandex in a helmet, but... I mean, anyway, <laughs> as you'll be seeing on screen now, an absolutely stunning game. The first time I ever learned of this game and I saw gameplay, I knew that I was going to have to end up buying this game. I, I just, yeah, I've been desperate to play it ever since. Um, yeah, just absolutely stunning. And not only is it everything I love in a platformer, is it bright, colourful, but it's also got real varied gameplay as you'll be seeing now. You take to the sky, the seas and more. And Let's have a quick look at it then. Um, so... Not minty minty, there's like a bit of mark in here so it's like a bit dirty, that could be the box itself, we'll see, but the worst of it is, I don't know if you can see here, but the sleeve has been put back in at an angle, so you can see there, look, and that's resulted in um, some of the artwork coming off here, so you've got that bit of white here. I'm by no means a mint collector, I know that they do have a copy of this in my local CEX, so I might go down and take a look at that and potentially swap it out, because there's also like a little bit of fold in here. Uh, again, where the sleeve just not been quite put in right. So I open it up, and this is what I was talking about. So, the no manual debate. Um, basically, I've been waiting for this game to come into CEX with a manual for too long, and I got fed up. I just want to play the game, and it's kind of got me thinking, this box is filthy, by the way. I'm losing trailer four. Look at the state of that. Ugh. Where was I? Yeah, so I actually did the dreaded purchase of W slash O. So without manual and like I said, it's got me thinking, um, especially with Mega Drive. Since CEX introduced the with and without manual, it's become so competitive to get games with manual. They just sell out instantly. The chances of finding them in store are virtually impossible. Every time I go in store now and I see Mega Drive games, unless you're talking like real bottom of the barrel, 10 pound sports games, they've never got a manual. And that's because people are buying them online at a frenetic pace as soon as they come into stock. And I'm gonna maybe urge on the side of buying Mega Drive games without manuals going forward, just simply because when I think about why I collect manuals, I guess it's the completionist in me. When I look at like Super Nintendo, I'm going for a full set, and I'm not officially going for a full set of Mega Drive. There's two things that I love when I buy a video game. The ability to play it, of course, and also the display. The manual doesn't display. And it's not even a financial factor. This game was only eight pounds cheaper uh, without a manual. Um, it's actually not a bad price at all at CEX because this cost me £52 without a manual, so it would have been uh, £65 with a manual. But if you're looking at eBay, you would have ended up paying more for it. Um, you'd sort of pay in and around £60, £65 for it without the manual. So yeah, it's kind of put me on a path of, am I going to start buying Mega Drive games without manuals? Because if I refer back to the start of this video, I explained the reason I was able to purchase all these games is through charity shop finds. It's not me going out and spending hard-earned cash on these games. So it feels a bit like beggars can't be choosers, right? I'm utilising the CEX voucher scheme, so I want to be able to buy them from CEX. But like I said, it's become almost impossible to buy Mega Drive games with manual, unless you get very lucky or you've got the fastest finger first when you get that email come through in the morning. So maybe for me, if you think how little it's cost me in terms of cash, can I just be happy to buy the game without the manual? I'm still not 100% on it, I'll be honest. If anyone out there has got a manual, let me know, because I'll happily buy one off you. And like I say, it's not a financial thing, because I'd happily spend £8 on a manual right now, um, which is what it would have cost me to buy this from CEX had it been in stock. It's just an availability thing. And I just think going forwards, if I can get over that mental barrier of buying games without manuals, it's going to make my life a lot easier as a Mega Drive collector. Um... So yeah, it's definitely food for thought, and I'd love to know what you guys think about it, because all the different people that I watch and different collectors that I talk to, um, also on the Ghetto Gang Discord, everyone's got opposing views on it, and why they want with manual, or why they don't care about the manual, so yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys have got to say about it, so let me know in the comment sections below. But in terms of this game, delighted to have it in my hands, just one that I've been wanting to play for such a long time, and uh, yeah, now I can finally do so. It's not in the best condition, admittedly, but uh, what I might do is take this down to my local and switch it because I know that they've got a, a without manual copy there. 
and hopefully I can get myself a, a bit one that looks a bit better than this one because yeah, um, this one has definitely seen better days. It's not horrendous, it would clean up, but uh, yeah, I think because I've got the option to get one very locally in Better Nick, I think that's probably what I'll do. So I'm not going to call this a loss, um, but yeah, cheeky cheeky boys, cheeky cheeky. <laughs> Right, okay, so that takes us on to the last one, the big one, and in typical YouTuber fashion, this is the most expensive one. Now, forget everything I just said. <laughs> this is a Mega Drive game, and um, this is actually the last one to arrive, simply because I purchased these, and I'm still sort of like sitting on the fence about what to do with the remaining voucher. And then I got a notification to say that this had come in stock with manual. I don't have any alert set up currently for without manuals so I only get alerted when they have them so when this came in stock I just jumped on it straight away um, yeah let's let's get into it anyway oh hello oh, that's nice that's made up for my previous poor attempt and like I said this is a Mega Drive game and look at the difference in packaging between the shops and this just shows you this is like what I often say to people when they criticise and condemn and vilify CEX, and often justifiably so, it differs so much branch to branch. Different management, um, often different franchisees, and uh, yeah, I think this is just highlighted in this physical form by the fact that one um, branch sent me a Mega Drive game in a thin cardboard envelope, and the other sent it in <laughs> this huge box here, which I'm assuming has got a lot of void fill in it. So yeah, we know it's well protected, let's hope it's in good condition. Okay, let's see. So this game cost me £50, so £53 posted. Okay, and that is Arrow Flash. This is a 1991 side scrolling shoot 'em up developed and published by Sega. You pilot a transformable fighter mecha left by your grandfather to fight against an alien attack of mankind. Wow, the only thing that my grandfather left me was a pair of cufflinks, that seems. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a little uh, underwhelming right now. Where's my mech suit, Gramps? <laughs> so as I say, you uh, are fighting against an alien attack on humankind, of course you are. Uh, as I said, this is a horizontal shooter, uh, but there is, however, one vertical stage, so it's nice that it switches it up throughout. And like most shmups, you can upgrade your ship and your weapons along the journey. However, unlike most shmups, you can actually transform your ship. So that's the USP here with this one. Um, you can switch between a humanoid mech and a fighter jet. Um, the weapons change and obviously the characteristics and speed etc change so it does give uh, an extra element of strategy throughout. Uh, very anime inspired as you'll be seeing now and interestingly the game uh, references uh, Gundam and also Macross. Uh, very mixed reviews. Um, I saw reviews of this game on its release that were 3 out of 10 and I saw reviews of this game that were 9 out of 10. Um, so very much a Marmite game. As you'll be seeing on screen now in terms of visuals it's quite a simplistic shooter and I'm not against that. I've often said that my favourite era of shmups is that 16-bit era. I do like the modern retro when they kind of take that magic and then put like a modern sheen on it a la a game like Andro Dunos 2. But uh, yeah, I'm quite into that simplistic thing. Sometimes when there's too much going on in the background, my old man eyes struggle to focus on all the ships and the bullets and everything else. So a game like this kind of looks like it might be up my street. But uh, I'm sitting here looking at it now and it looks to be in really nice condition. Um, the cover art looks like... There's zero fading at all. It doesn't even look um, that old. There is a little bit of a crease down the side where maybe it's, again, not quite sat in the box right at some point. But generally speaking, this is in really nice condition. Real nice, vivid artwork that pops. And uh, yeah, I've done well with this one because, um, well, I should probably check the manual before I start talking about I've done well. But obviously we know it's got the manual. Yeah, there it is. And uh, it's in nice condition as well. So yeah, really nice condition, this. I think I've done very well here. Like I said, I've been waiting a little while for this to come into stock. And the reason I've been waiting for this game to come into stock is that I am actually going for a full Mega Drive shmup set. 
Um, so with this, I know I also need Mega Swift. I've got Super Swift on the Super Nintendo, so it's never been a priority for me. But I do need Mega Swift. But let me know what else I'm missing uh, in terms of Mega Drive shmups. I don't think there's too many more now that I need to complete that subset. And yeah, I'll be delighted to get that done because yeah, it's just a, a console that I love playing shmups on. Arguably the best system for shmups, right? Um, and that's coming from a diehard Super Nintendo fan. Um, but yeah, back to this game. Very, very happy to be able to add this to my collection. I think we're definitely on to another winner there. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of thrown another spanner in the works in terms of the manual debate because sitting here looking at this and how nice the condition and how nice the manual is, it's making me smile on the inside and the outside. Whereas this one, I'm just happy to have it so I can play it, but it wasn't available with the manual. So I don't know. I need you guys to let me know in the comments where you're at on this one because I'm somewhat torn. I don't want to be waiting months and months before I can add games to my Mega Drive collection. Yeah, I think it's a shame with CEX almost that there isn't a bigger disparity between the with and without manual prices. I think maybe over time they're going to have to modify that because I just think what's going to happen is we end up with a huge surplus stock of retro video games that nobody's buying because they're waiting for manuals to come. And when you're looking at a difference in price with like £8, I don't think it's sufficient. I think you need to be looking at like 20-25% potentially depending on the price of the game originally um, to give people that added incentive to purchase it without the manual because like for me, if you're going to spend... £50 on a game, I don't think £8 is a big enough bridge where you think, oh no, I won't buy that without the manual or with the manual. So yeah, that's just my uh, two cents on it. But generally speaking, I think we can call that a win, right? I think we've got what? Three and a half out of four, I'd say. And uh, just games I'm really happy to add to my collection. I'm really happy with these. Like I say, I pondered for a long time over my basket. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of this selection which of these games have you played and yeah uh very very happy with that it's been a very sort of ps3 essentials heavy uh few weeks here at the retro ghetto i make no apologies for that i'm absolutely loving that hunt and those collections but it is nice to get back to some retro right nothing hits home quite like retro so yeah man uh delighted and i just want to say right i've had some fantastic finds just yesterday um i went to a retro fair and I've got some great stuff that I'll be showing on Sunday's vlog, so keep it locked to the channel for that one. But as always, thank you very much for watching. Play your games, keep it retro. I'll see you on Sunday's vlog in a bit. Yeah, man, take that. You're watching the Retro Ghetto. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>